Early Access is one of those programs that has many pros and cons. While it has been a valuable asset to quite a few games over the years, it too can be just as equally a major burden to the development of a game. Several times this year I've played Early Access games only to return to them again at a later date to find them deteriorating bit by bit. And the game we're looking at today is one I worry may be heading down that road. Space Tyrant is a turn-based strategy game being developed and published by Blue Wizard Digital, the creator of the popular puzzle game Slay Away Camp that released last year. It released on Steam Early Access July 19th and has continued to receive regular updates and balancing since. Space Tyrant plays a lot like Sins of a Solar Empire with a mix of FTL but with a much faster pace and minimal complexity in comparison. It is extremely fun to play and has a total of three very different races requiring different tactics but some recent changes to the game have definitely made it more of a frustration than a joy to play. In Space Tyrant there are a total of three races to play. The first is the Hoplite Dynasty, a race of hard as nails space marine bunnies that excel at warfare both on ground and air. The second is the Berserk, a race of insect creatures that fight with numbers and finance over raw power and strength. Finally is the Techno Slugs, that I'm sure you already gathered, are a race of party hard slugs who fit in the middle between the other two races, using their large speakers as a part of their warfare. Each of the races has their own advantages and disadvantages. For example, the Hoplites have strong units and a more powerful dice roll, but they are less technologically proficient and their units are expensive. The Berserk have cheaper ships and can hold more cars and have higher income, but have much weaker ships and dice roll. Each of the races has their own unique cards, units, commanders and abilities, making each of them fun to play at least once due to needing different tactics and playstyles to succeed with them. There is a gameplay unbalancing between the races and their units. The Hoplite Dynasty is a bit overpowered both with units and invasions, while the Berserk are quite underpowered both from a units and invasion perspective. Sadly, despite my best efforts, I am yet to unlock the Techno Slugs. My experience with them is simply just battling them, where some of their ships too feel a bit overpowered. Put that aside and you'll find that each and every race in the game is fun, enjoyable and a varying experience. The goal of Space Tyrant is to gain galactic dominance by destroying the Galactic Senate. Before you can attack the Senate itself you must first gain control of various sectors throughout the galaxy which is done by completing a variety of missions. You must choose a mission from the campaign screen which takes place in one of three races sectors. At first there is only a few missions available of easy difficulty, but as you progress more will unlock with increasing difficulty. Each mission type has its own goals and must be reached in order to be victorious. For example, some missions will require you to take control of a certain percentage of a map, others you will need to have a set amount of money and in some you will need to capture and keep control of specific control points giving a variety of mission types. A lot of missions will also have specific quirks that change up the rules of it. For example, quirks like narrow lanes results in the inability to use massive dreadnought ships, or poor cities which results in less income from captured city planets. Having quirks allows for every mission to feel different and stops them from becoming monotonous. Every mission also has its own rewards which will help you in later, more difficult missions. Rewards come in the form of new cards which I'll go into in greater depth later on, items which are used to equip your commander for bonuses and at times you can unlock additional commanders for your race you are playing, all of which add another layer of depth to the strategy. After each mission the Galactic Senate will advance on a system by sending one of their ships to it. If any of the three systems have a total of four Senate ships in it you will lose the campaign. Upon being victorious on a mission, you will destroy the Senate control in that sector, and the Senate will only advance one ship with an additional ship after each mission later on. If you fail a mission, the Senate will send more ships, making it harder for you to gain control of that system. Each race has a total of three commanders, two of which will be locked at first. Each commander has their own unique card abilities, along with combat abilities, making unlocking them quite important as they are useful for different objectives. When you lose a mission, the commander you are using for it will become injured, resulting in their special card abilities being locked and unable to be used in any further mission for that campaign. Overall, just the campaign screen alone has a lot of strategic elements that you must take in and utilise to make your life as a tyrant as easy as possible. When entering a mission, you must take the objectives and quirks into account and arrange your commander's items accordingly. As every item you have equipped, no matter how big or small the bonus may seem, really makes a big difference. 
The only problem I would have right now with this part of the game is the change between commanders getting killed and injured. In previous builds of the game, if you lost a mission, you lost your commander. If you lost all your commanders, then you lost the game. My criticism here is that if all you lose is your special abilities for a commander when failing a mission, there's little to really worry about. I found that knowing my commander would be killed increased the intensity of the missions, and without it, it was really lowered, and that was one of the initial highlights of Space Tyrant for me. Every mission felt like it was going to be your last, especially if you had no other commanders, and now Space Tyrant has lost it. But aside from that, the actual campaign and how it plays is really well done and a whole lot of fun to play, for the most part. It is with the gameplay that the sins of the Solar Empire inspiration really lie. The map of each mission consists of various sectors and planets. During your turn you can move your fleet to another sector to expand your territory and gain bonuses. Enter the shipyard to purchase ships, assuming you are at a captured planet, and oppress a planet under your control to increase your gains from it each turn. All actions except that of purchasing ships use up your action for that turn, meaning you won't be able to do anything else other than buy ships until the next turn. When moving to capture a new sector, you must first destroy any ships defending it before you can invade it. If you move to a planet with ships defending it, you will be brought to the battle screen where you will need to destroy all enemy ships. At the start of each round, you are given a choice of three battle abilities. These only have one use, and choosing the right one and the right time to use it can really make a big difference in the battle. Along with that, each ship has its special ability along with the commander also having theirs. In order to use these abilities, you need the amount of energy required to use it. Energy generates automatically and is displayed at the top left of the screen above your units. At first, only basic abilities will be available, but as you progress through the mission, more will unlock. A battle ends once either your units or the enemies are destroyed. If you lose, your commander will be out of action for one turn, and for fleet leaders, it's two turns. Your commander and fleet leader will respawn at your home world. If you win, you can proceed with capturing the planet. In order to actually capture a planet, you will need to roll a dice. The dice roll must be a number that is higher or equal to that of the defense of the planet. If you fail to at least equal the defense of the planet, you will need to roll again on your next turn, or use an invasion card if you have one available to you. Different worlds aid you in various ways. Some will provide you research that is used to upgrade your ships, and others will give you more money after each turn. There are also prisons where you can release prisoners to give additional fleets to help you expand and conquer. Then there are dice worlds, which, when under your control, give you additional dice to roll for each invasion, allowing you to roll much higher numbers. The fast-paced turn-based strategy and the fast-paced battles of combat really work well, as they make the game move quickly. Missions don't generally take any longer than about 30 minutes, with the exception of the final mission. The gameplay is fun and the dice roll for capturing the planet adds a level of strategy to it due to having to adapt depending on how successful you are with the rolls. Due to the unpredictable nature of the dice roll, it forces you to always think ahead and keep on your toes, as you never know when things will go your way or go belly up on you. It really makes for some compelling gameplay. But that is only the basics of the gameplay. There is more to it than just that, such as random events that occur when capturing a planet. Upon capturing a planet, you will search it. More often than not, this will lead to an event where you will need to make a decision based on several choices. This is where the FTL inspiration comes into play. Each decision of these events can lead to multiple outcomes, some positive, some negative, and some neutral. Positive gains can include additional fleet experience, money, unlocking new tyrant talents, which unlock more options for events, and more. Negatives hinder you in some ways, such as costing money, research, losing ships, and the likes. Neutral outcomes have neither good nor bad results, giving you neither a loss or a gain. Having an FTL-style event system isn't going to appeal to every strategist out there, but it results is similar to that of the unpredictable dice roll. They add curveballs, both good and bad, into each mission, meaning you need to adapt in accordance to how they go. It adds another layer of depth to the strategy of the game, and quite frankly, is also exciting and intense to see how they end up working out. And it fits in quite well overall with the general gameplay of the game. Next up is the card system. These essentially work as bonuses and require the control of crystals in order to activate them. The more powerful a card is, the more crystals are required to use it. At the end of each turn, along with your research and money income, you are given a random card from your deck. Generally, you will only have a few crystals to begin with and you can capture more throughout the mission. Crystals refill at the end of each turn. The more crystals you have, the more cards you can use at any one time, with some missions having objectives that revolve around doing exactly that. 
Cards come in all shapes and forms, including invasion cards, ship cards, experience cards and much more. Each race also has over 20 unique cards to unlock through completing missions. The biggest challenge the player will face with the cards is that only so many can be held at any one time, and choosing which ones to discard at the end of the turn and what ones to keep can really make a difference, and some races can hold more cards at any one time than others. They really do add another layer of depth to the strategy of Space Tyrant, and can result in turning the tides and missions if used correctly. Now I know what you're thinking. I haven't mentioned anything negative about the gameplay yet. Well, unfortunately it isn't all sunshine and rainbows, and the negatives of Space Tyrant are about to begin, starting with the unrest mechanic. Essentially unrest is the counterpart to your tyranny, and represents the race you are attacking revolting against you. Throughout a mission you will need to keep your tyranny up, as at the end of each turn unrest will increase. You gain tyranny from capturing planets, events, and bombing planets. If you completely lose your tyranny, the race will revolt against you, and you will lose the mission. This mechanic isn't a problem on its own, but the latest update to the game has made a change. In missions with the Monopoly objective, unrest now increases with each turn that passes, this being called passive unrest. The passive unrest results in unrest quickly outweighing your tyranny gains, making it impossible to actually win in less than 10 turns. Generally this wouldn't be so much a problem, but Monopoly missions often give the best rewards, such as unlocking new commanders, some powerful items, and cards, making them a highly desired mission to complete. But with passive unrest it makes them practically impossible, and nothing but an infuriation to see on your campaign screen. If I'm to be frank I would rather see the damn thing abolished completely, as controlled missions where you need to capture specific areas are as aggressive as a mission needs to get in Space Tyrant. Another problem I have is the unlocking of the Battleship and Dreadnought units for each of the races. Before you can buy these ships from the shipyard, you need to unlock them by completing a particular objective. While this isn't so much a problem with tougher units like those of the Hoplite Dynasty, but for the likes of the Berserk, it becomes a major issue. When embarking on missions with 3 or 4 star difficulty, the enemy begin to have Battleships and Dreadnoughts at their disposal, while you don't. There is nothing strategic about having this, it is nothing more than a grind to allow you to even the playing field. When playing the Berserk with weaker units to begin with, it just puts you at an unfair disadvantage. And the requirements to unlock the Berserk's Battleship and Dreadnought are long, time consuming, and quickly become a frustration more than joyful replayability. The gameplay as a whole is still vastly enjoyable, but in comparison to my experience with previous builds of the game, problems are definitely becoming apparent in the design choices as development progresses. It's a prime example of the burden that comes with early access, and that is if you attempt to keep everyone happy, the game begins to suffer and lose what it was initially supposed to be. And I worry that Space Tyrant 2 is beginning to head down that road. Space Tyrant was never meant to be a hardcore strategy experience, but with mechanics like passive unrest and the increased difficulty in the latest update, it's beginning to feel like one. The motto of Space Tyrant has always been conquer the galaxy during your lunch break. This is due to the fast nature of the game and its missions generally taking no longer than 30 minutes. But right now, despite how much I love the game and its gameplay, Space Tyrant is slowly slipping out of that motto, forgetting what it initially presented, and that was to be a more casual, strategic experience. And despite how much it saddens me to say it, my intrigue and enjoyment of the game are slowly dwindling as development progresses because of this. One of the highlights of Space Tyrant is the humour and its many references to sci-fi culture, much like their previous title, Slayaway Camp, was comedy homage to slasher movies. Everything about Space Tyrant is a sci-fi homage. The hoplites are very reminiscent of the Space Marines from Starcraft or Warhammer 40k. The techno slugs are similar to that of the slurm slugs from Futurama. Even the scutters from Red Dwarf have a part as an event in the game. And I'm sure there are so many more that I simply just haven't picked up on. The events throughout the game are often humorous in many ways, such as silly, innocent or dark. There is comedy to be found in the game that will make near enough anyone laugh at some point, no matter their type of comedy or sense of humour. Blue Wizard Digital certainly have done a great job in continuing bringing fun and humour into their games through that of what they love. Make no mistake, Space Tyrant is a fantastic game, but it is one that is sitting very close to the edge of an identity crisis. Already this year I've watched several great games in an early access program go from utmost grace to annihilation, and I seriously hope that Space Tyrant isn't going to end up the same. 
There is plenty to enjoy with Space Tyrant and it is still worth its asking price, but the latest big build has certainly been a step backwards as opposed to the direction of progress. I love everything about Space Tyrant. The aesthetic, the concept, the races, the units, the sound and the gameplay. But right now I feel that Blue Wizard Digital is attempting to please everyone, and in doing so the original concept and motto for Space Tyrant is slipping away. Blue Wizard Digital is more than capable of creating excellent games, and they've proven that with Slayaway Camp, but up until the latest release they were doing a bang up job with Space Tyrant 2. I can only hope that this stumble is nothing more than that and is a part of the development process and not a sign of the game changing for the worse, like so many others before it. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, until next time, have fun.